Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. A little while ago a viewer wrote me a note. He said he had just purchased a new lathe, but did not have a chuck. He wanted to turn a bowl, so this question was, how does he turn a bowl without a chuck? Well, there was a time when there were lathes, but no one had a chuck, like this one. I regularly use a chuck, and I recommend that every wood turner have one, but that's just me. Back to his question. I haven't done a bowl the way he asked in a long time. In fact, the last time I did, I did leave screw holes in the base that I had filled. But I find that now to be totally unacceptable. So, how do we turn a bowl without a chuck, without leaving nasty screw holes in the base of the bowl? Well, I recently purchased a new mini lathe, and I don't have a chuck for it yet. And I emphasize yet. I will be buying one as standard equipment for a lathe. So, let's make this small bowl out of dry walnut without using a chuck and without leaving nasty screw holes in the base. Let's go for it. My new mini lathe has a small faceplate, so the first order of business is to screw the faceplate to my bowl blank. Some would say to use super long screws. I'm just using one and a half inch square drive flathead screws. For dry wood, these have been adequate. Since my studio space is limited, I'll clamp and set up the mini lathe on my full size lathe. It's a little high, but I'll survive. Even with the wood securely screwed to the faceplate, I'll keep the tail stock in place at least until the wood is round and more balanced. Now to rough out the blank, I'll use my large bowl gouge. One of the first things I noticed is that I have to take very light cuts on this mini lathe, else I'll stall the lathe. It just does not have the power of my big lathe. Let's see if changing the belts will help. Yes, it helps a little. This is definitely taking longer to rough out this bowl on this mini lathe. I'll flatten the bottom and even sand it a little. Since I don't want screw holes in the bowl and I don't have any of this walnut to waste, I'll glue on a waste block that I can screw into. My faceplate has a large center hole which will make it difficult to center on the faceplate and I only have the one faceplate. So I thought I'd drill a hole in the waste block for a dowel to fit in the large center hole in the faceplate. This should help me center the faceplate. Now to true up the waste block while I can still get to it easily and to trim down the dowel. Now for the big switch. I'll reverse the wood on the faceplate and center it perfectly on the other side. Well, that didn't work. The dowel interfered with seating the faceplate so mount it again in the original position and turn down the dowel even more. Whoops! Now the faceplate is on, but the faceplate will not seat properly on the headstock spindle. So back to the drawing board. At least I have screw holes in the proper places. I'll remove the dowel and remount to the same screw holes. To do so, I made a mark on the bowl and the faceplate to get the same positions on my next attempt. After removing the screws, I sanded the remainder of the dowel flush to the faceplate, then remounted the walnut. What a comedy of errors. Now back to work. I trimmed the outside of the bowl again before starting to hollow out the interior. I brought up the tailstock again just to be safe. Now for the interior, I'm still using my large bowl gouge. For the bottom, I switch to a round carbide cutter.
With the interior finished, it's time to start the sanding and finishing process. I applied my mineral oil and beeswax mix and sanded it up through the grits by hand. After sanding, I applied walnut oil. It seems appropriate to use walnut oil on a walnut bowl. Now to finish the base. I mounted some glued up layers of MDF to the faceplate. I don't yet have a tap for this size spindle, so I had to screw the MDF to the same faceplate. I turned the MDF to approximate the bowl shape and patted it with a sanding pad. I turned down the waste block to a small stub, made the bottom a little concave, and dressed it up a little bit, then sanded and finished the base except for that small stub. Then I broke off the remaining stub and managed to hold the bowl onto the jam chuck while I sanded and finished the stub area. While this went okay, I probably should have spent a little extra time to properly fit the jam chuck to the bowl edge. Whew, I did it. I turned a bowl on a mini lathe and without a four jaw chuck. Would I do it again? No. I'm going to buy a small four jaw chuck that will fit this mini lathe. But I do have a nice small walnut bowl just in time to use as an Easter basket. Please like this video and add your comments, suggestions, and critique. If you haven't already subscribed, take a minute now and do it now so I can keep you informed about new videos. I'm learning from this process and hope you are also. And we'll see you again with the next video.